Cantran, the 60-year-old murderer who made a dance celebration the final dance. Celebrations are a part of life. They are a source to bring happiness. But what if a celebration turns into a deadly tragedy? We never know the unpredictability of life because sometimes life can get extremely cruel than one has ever expected. Today's case tells the tale of one such deadly celebration where those who were celebrating life were completely unaware of the fact that this celebration will bring their deaths right in front of them. Welcome to AF Crime the channel that brings you fascinating crimes all around the world. If you're interested in this kind of content, then this channel is for you. Make sure to like this video, click on the subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell to keep you updated on our recent uploads. Now, let's get right into the video and investigate more about this strange case which shook entire America to an extent that they are finally thinking of executing strict firearm laws. just like any other day for the middle-aged Alex Citran, who was a ballroom dancing teacher at Monterey Park's popular Star Ballroom Dance Studio. He knew that today was going to be an extremely busy day because it was the night following the Chinese New Year. Their dance studio had arranged the Lunar Year celebrations party at the studio, hence all of them were supposed to be there in the early hours. He knew that most of the Chinese American community living in this largest suburb would turn to the ballroom to celebrate this festival of glee. So his pace became quicker than usual. Finally, he reached the ballroom and found that the studio was already crowded with heads since the festivities were just to begin. The clock was striking 10 at the moment. Alex knew that things were going quite well as of yet. Everyone was chattering. He met some acquaintances who were there and interested to know the dance forms he offered. He quietly answered all of them and took a glance at the wall clock. The clock in its digital format was depicting an eerie time, 2222. Consider it a coincidence or something, unusual that he felt strange. Right when he was contemplating the eeriness, he heard an excruciating loud noise at the front door of the studio. He thought that the fireworks for the celebration had already started. However, the shots became louder with every passing second, and there he could see a 72-year-old strange-looking man with an automatic pistol in his hand. He was firing vehemently, and by that time, three people had already fallen down to the ground. Now, Alex's mind regained its consciousness, and he knew that they all were going today. With a remaining sense of consciousness, he tried to escape and reach the back door of the studio. It was near a spare storeroom. He took refuge just near that. Now, he was partially invisible among the crowd, but he could see that the gunshots were being fired at a consistent pace. Before his eyes, he could see people lying lifeless on the ground. After nearly minutes, he heard some police sirens and found that the shooter was escaping from the scene. The shooters swept away quickly, and the people who were left at the site were witnessing the lifeless bodies for about seven minutes till police arrived at the crime scene. As the police force took hold of the crime scene, their first attempt was to ascertain the death count. Ten people were instantly pronounced dead, and the rest of the injured was sent to the hospitals. Right after a few hours after the attack, another person died because his injuries were enormous. This was considered an extremely brutal case of gun violence in this Californian suburb. The county sheriff, Robert Luna, took matters into his hands immediately and reported the death counts along with the victims' ages. He said that most of those who died were in the later part of their lives, mostly belonged to the 50s and 60s scale. There was no doubt in the fact because the neighborhood in which the Star Dance Room studio was located was an area where most of the Asian Americans spent their old age, since it was relatively a quiet part of the neighborhood. So, most victims were old as they gathered in the studio for the celebrations. Instantly, the witnesses started reporting about the physical appearance of the individual responsible for all this. With the help of descriptions given by multiple people, who can trans identity was revealed, and this further led to extensive police research for almost six hours till they encountered a similar case, but with a surprising twist. It seemed that trans madness hadn't ended with the carnage of Star Ballroom Dance Studio. 
but then he went to another studio right after this. Fortunately, Brandon Say, who was a young operator of the dance hall, immediately took hold of Tran, and with the help of another man, both of them tried to take the weapon from him. In this tussle, Tran knew that he couldn't win from two people at the same time, so he fled. Right after that, Brandon informed the police with the description of a possible criminal. The police found that the appearance as described by Brandon was similar to that of the one at the Star Ballroom Dance Studio. They were quick to build the links and they found that the person they were searching for was very dangerous and needed to be arrested because the whole neighborhood was in an utmost danger during his presence. Well, unlike other criminals, Tran didn't do much effort for the escapade. He was quickly found with the help of footage they had gotten from the site. Right when the team of police arrived at the location of a white van, which was standing in a parking lot approximately 30 miles away from the scene of the carnage, they found from the other people that the van had been standing over there for the last 30 minutes. The police became suspicious. They surrounded the van, and right when they knocked, no one answered. After a few minutes, it was decided that one officer would open up the door to the van and the rest would surround it from all four sides. Just as the officers approached the van, they heard a loud gunshot inside the van. It was an indicator of bloodshed. Without wasting any further time, the officers immediately opened up the van and there they found the dead body of Hu Can Tran in a slumping position. His pistol was present adjacent to the dead body. He had probably shot himself with the same gun upon finding no way to escape. The mystery was resolved within an instant. The murderer of 11 people had killed himself too, but there was still a conundrum attached to the case. Why had he done this? This was what kept many people turning to the case again and again, because they couldn't believe that someone could do this without a potential reason behind it. Some said that he was under the influence of drugs, which had provoked him to a point that he was unable to differentiate between his hallucinations and the reality which he perceived. So far, the forensics hasn't approved these claims, but this case gave way to many strange theories and incidents. Right after some hours of the killing at Monterey Park, another such incident was noticed in a nearby neighborhood of Half Bay Moon. The incident was bizarrely similar to the one which had happened at the Star Ballroom Dance Studio. This second case involved a 67-year-old man named Chunil Zhao, who killed seven people right in front of the children. It is worth noting that both these incidents have happened in California. People are trying to link up the connection between both incidents, but so far, except for the similar nature, there is no relation between the two. Even the police later revealed that Chunil Zhao had killed men due to some workplace clashes. Police further revealed some interesting details about the life of Tran. The most interesting fact was that the dance studio, which he made a target later on, was once a hub of his professional growth. In fact, he had met his future wife over there as he was a dance instructor over there once. Though the couple split later on in 2006, his identity gave a permanent space to Star Studio. His wife also revealed that later on he adopted the profession of a truck driver to sustain his life, but his nature was always odd from the beginning. She describes that the couple separated because of trans hostility and abusive behavior. Some of the previous dance instructors who remember trans also reported the same thing about his behavior. The most shocking thing is that he was friendless. Soon after his divorce, he started living on his own in a mobile home and cut his ties with his friends and other family members. The police report further tells that the reason behind his lost bonds was his actions of theft and suspicious behavior, so he had no one to call a family. If we look at the psychological side of this incident, we can find some potential reasons behind transactions. It's natural that a person who has lost his family and other relationships over time would try to direct his anger on someone else. It seems that he considered the Star Studio as the place responsible for this downfall. At the moment, the initial claims revolve around a tale of personal revenge, but as the case will further unravel itself, new details will make their way. Only then the true motive behind the action can be found. 
The case was criticized on social media due to the inability of the police force to arrive on time. Many believe that the police considered the incident was just another incident of trivial fireworks mishap due to which they took no notice and when they arrived things had gotten worse. Some say that if the police had taken a noticeable action and had acted a bit more efficiently, a lot of lives could have been saved. The reaction emerged after a statement from Police Chief Scott Weiss, who revealed that the officers who had arrived at the scene of carnage came across a situation none of them was prepared for. He also revealed that this was due to a probable idea of the celebrations going on in the neighborhood. Well, even if a lot of criticism is offered now, it won't lessen the potential danger of gun violence. The alarming increase in the rate is indeed a bad omen for the police force. And when this is followed by two bizarrely similar incidents, one definitely needs to explore the root cause of the problem. Why is there no check and balance when it comes to the trade and possession of illegal weapons? Is it time to change the prevailing gun laws? These are the questions which resonate in hundreds of minds across America as these incidents have become highly common. Recent reports have claimed that the state now is rethinking strengthening the gun possession laws to avoid incidents like these in future, but there is no day about its implementation as of yet. For now, we can only hope that stiff gun possession laws get to become a part of the implementation plan and that the ratio of such killings eventually drops to an absolute zero. If you feel that this case was an intriguing one, like this video and share it with all your friends. Also, subscribe to our AF Crime channel for finding more shocking crime tales around the world. And if you have any criminal case that you'd like me to investigate, share it in the comment section below.